Hey friends, my name is Yi and welcome to a new video for IGCC Geography. And today we have 1.4 for population density and distribution. So here's the specification right here from the website. And in this video, we have two case studies, which is number one, a densely populated country or area, which is the Northeastern United States. And number two, a sparsely populated country or area, which will look into the Canadian Northlands. So starting with a population, here are quite a lot of key terms for you to know. So the population density is quite simple or quite straightforward. It's the average number of people per kilometer squared or square kilometer. And distribution just means how the people or like how the population spreads around in a country or an area. So densely populated and sparsely populated are the opposite. And densely populated is having a high population density. This means that many people live per kilometer squared and sparsely populated just means there's a lower population density. And densely populated and sparsely populated are not to be confused with um, overpopulation or underpopulation because overpopulation has to do with the resources in the country as well as underpopulation. So just to recap, overpopulation, let me just write it down, overpopulation or underpopulation is not the same because overpopulation means that there's too many people in the country to utilize the resources in the country. So just it just means that there's more population or like more people than the resources in the country. And here are some examples of places that are high, that are densely populated and sparsely populated. And densely populated include the northeastern USA because there's a pleasant climate, eastern Europe and eastern China. And the opposite of that would be sparsely populated, which for example is like Mongolia, Central Australia or Siberia. And there's a pattern that you can see whether a country or an area has a density or a sparsely population or like populated. And you can look at whether they have a good climate, good healthcare, good economy, or like let's say infertile soil or unpleasant climate. And here we have more notes on densely and sparsely populated. So here's a note. The reasons for an area being densely or sparsely populated boils down to four factors as I mentioned. That's the physical side, the physical factors, political, social, and economic. So here's, uh, here are some reasons for why an area is densely populated and sparsely populated. So we have some physical factors, for example, flat land in a densely populated area and fertile soil, and as well as pleasant climate which means that it's quite nice to live there and they can build and they can, and they can like farm in that area which promotes population growth as well as there's a national peace and political stability and there's a good infrastructure which means that the country is quite stable and people would move into those countries because those countries have a lot of pool factors and moving on to the social and the economic as there's also of course good healthcare and good job opportunities which means people will move to those countries or those areas. And the opposite of that, uh, sparsely populated, there's some physical factors, which is basically the opposite of these factors. So like the, this has flat land, and the opposite of that would be steep and infertile soil. There's political unrest involving violence, and there's poor job opportunities and economic instability. So here's the first case study, which is a densely populated country or area at any scale from local to regional, and we'll look at the northeastern United States of America. So here are some notes. So the area, like the North America has a low population density at around 35 people per kilometer squared, compared to the global average of 59. But the northeastern USA, which we'll look into right now, has a density of 830 people per kilometer squared. And the northeast of the USA contains regions stretching from Boston, in Washington to Chicago and St. Louis right here. So as you can see here, this, this map right here of the United States, that's the West USA, Midwest, South, and the Northeast is right here. And here are some reasons why the Northeastern USA is densely populated. So number one, they have good climate and soils, and the temperature is um, quite nice compared to Western America, which is drier in comparison and the soil is fertile for agriculture. So people move to those areas to let's say farm or to like promote growth. And here's transportation links. The region here has the most highly developed transport networks in North America. 
because there are quite some important cities in the Northeast America. So that's why the, um, the authorities decide to build good transportation links. And the third point, it's a major financial center in the Northeast America. And America's largest city and port of New York City is located on the East Coast. And most of America's ports are located on the East Coast due to the trade with Europe and relative isolation in the West. Because the West right here, because these part, uh, like, um, this region right here is the Pacific Ocean. Whereas this right here, you can't see on the map, on the screen, but it's Europe right here if you know your geography quite well. And lastly, we have a sparsely populated country or area at any scale from local to regional. And we'll look at sparsely, which is the Canadian Northlands. So we mentioned about the USA just now, which is down here. And the Canadian Northlands is basically the, uh, Canada right here and above right here. So the Canadian Northlands comprise the part of Canada lying far north. And the whole population density in the whole area has a population density of less than one person per kilometer squared. And if you remember from the previous slide, the global average is 59 people per kilometer squared. So 75% um, of the Canadians live within 160 kilometer from the main border with the USA. So there's quite a lot, a lot of people living like here because these are the main cities. And here are some reasons why the Canadian Northlands is very sparsely populated. So here we have some physical factors, which is for example, climate. It's very cold in the Canadian Northlands because it's so far up north. And most regions have a mean January temperature of below minus 20 degrees Celsius. And because it's so, uh, it's so cold and it's like minus, minus 20 degrees Celsius, the soil is very infertile, which means that most of the ground, sorry, this is meant to be the ground, not the group. Most of the ground is permanently frozen. So, sorry. So because it's so cold, most of the ground is permanently frozen. So the Northlands are affected by permafrost to a depth of 300 meters. And it's quite deep, so that's, that's why that the crops can't be grown. And there's also poor transport links in the Canadian Northlands, as there's a, there's a great distance separating the different small communities in the Northlands. So one might be here, one, one might be here, and there's poor transport links going from this part right here to this part. As not one of the railway lines extending into the Northlands crosses the Arctic Circle, which basically means that the Canadian Northlands, this area right here, has a lot of push factors which pushes people out of the area and to like pull to like other areas, for example, or like for example, northeastern USA. So people might move from this area right here to northeastern USA, or if it's within the country internal migration, they'll move to this part of the of Canada right here which is at the border, because we saw that people, like lots of Canadians live within 160 km of the main border. And that's it for this video for 1.4 for population density and distribution. If you need any more learning resources or any teaching resources, you can check out my website in the description, or you can type it out in your browser at www.yemakeseasy.com. And that's it for this video, and I'll see you all in the next video. Here's to learning made easy.